as you know, the speaker that the, there is in, in Congress, they're trying to find a speaker. And Donald Trump so far has been considering whether to accept the speakership if they can't come to an agreement. So he's thinking about visiting the Capitol to help them out, to which Jason Johnson had an interesting thing to say about that. Check this out. We'll take it on the other side. But Jason, Mark is forgetting that the great unifier may be making his way to Capitol Hill during this process next week, Donald Trump. Who is that going to benefit? Uh, the only person that's going to benefit is the Democrats. And I'm, I'm sorry, but in, in, a, in a functional democracy, the guy who was responsible for an attempted violent coup should never be confident enough to return to the scene of the crime. Like this is, it's kind of ridiculous that Donald Trump is walking free at all, but the fact that he would feel comfortable to come back to Washington DC when just two years ago, he led a mob of people to try to murder almost everybody in that room is galling to me. And that's something okay, that I think Jason, Democrats should point out on a regular basis. But by yes. that measure, it would be absurd for someone who did that to be running for president of the United States. And that's exactly what he's doing. Yes, that's a larger <laughs> problem. If we, if we had a more, a, a more swift and a more aggressive justice system, he wouldn't be in a position to do that. I mean, that that's the larger problem that we have here. It, it's flaunting the law and flaunting how he really attacked the sort of sovereignty of this nation. So that being said, it would be great for Democrats to point that out. It's not going to do anything for the Republican Party. They have a choice between two terrible candidates. You have Jen Jordan, who is, quite frankly, considered a kook, even amongst conservatives. He's also not very good at raising money. And whoever becomes the speaker at this point is going to be responsible for raising money and protecting Republicans who are trying to protect their seats in 2024. So that would say Steve Scalise, but Scalise has health issues. Scalise has problems with his own personality. Scalise has his own bad background. So you don't have particularly good choices. If I was forced, I would simply say, look, I would just vote for Hakeem Jeffries because on the one hand, you've got Jim Jordan who tried to help with the coup and somebody else who doesn't seem competent for the job. I just can't stop laughing, Jason. He has problems with his own personality. I would just die. <laughs> you know, that's not any rule. She has problems with her own personality. In all seriousness, in all seriousness, though, Mark, do you see any solution here? Do you think this Akeem Jeffries idea, Charlie Dent raised it the other night, sort of a power sharing, not necessarily Jeffries specifically, but do you see any solution? Well, I think it'd be a long way to get to something remotely like that. Right. But the problem uh, that's pretty clear here is that you have 18 Republicans who were elected in, in, in uh, Biden districts. Absolutely. That is the issue. Again, uh, the, the, oh, first of all, having the, the House is going to be flipped next election in 2024. Mark my word. We'll get Jeffries as speaker next election. It's above the yearly rate of inflation. So that's good news. We spend a, we spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.